We are here on Sirius XM Urban View where talk empowers and becomes action and it is the first day of Kwanzaa and it is unity. And when I think about this woman, I think about all of the paths that have been paved by people, all of the shoulders that we all stand on. And if you are at all creative, this, this name should be a household name. Uh, it is one of the first films, I think it might be the first film that I ever saw directed and produced by a black woman and I never forgot it. And it also harkens back to us so much. I'm talking Daughters of the Dust and I'm talking about the legendary, the legendary, the amazing Miss Julie Dash. Hello. Hello, how are you? I am, I, listen, um, one of the perks of having this job is that you get to talk to your heroes sometimes. Not often, but this is one of those days. So first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> it's wonderful. Let me, can, I want to start there because for those who have done the work and then you get forgotten for 20 years or more, <laughs> and then Ava DuVernay was like, you know, I'm going to do this little queen sugar and make sure I highlight because this is what it requires for us to never forget, right? We got to remember to go back like Sankofa and get the folk and bring them forward. Mm -hmm. How important was that, Julie Dash, to get that call? And tell me about that call. Well, um, I was aware that Queen Sugar was being shot. And it was like, oh, I really love this. I really love this show. But let me back up just a little bit. I knew Ava from before because, you know, I was there on the opening day of her first film that she made. So she was in the lobby and I came through with my daughter. I said, you know, we're supporting this young woman filmmaker. And uh, so I've always been supportive of her. And, you know, likewise, she's always been supportive of me. So uh, getting back to Queen Sugar, Queen Sugar was hot, hot, hot the first season. And I'm sitting there just watching it saying, I love these people. I love Ralph Angel. I love Nova. I know these people. And I was teaching already lecturing at uh, Morehouse and Spelman. And, you know, I got this call from Ava, you know, she has this heavy voice, you know, hey, Julia, you know, would you be uh, interested in doing an episode? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, yes, absolutely. When I'm ready to go right now, when let's do this thing. And so she actually gave me multiple episodes and I went to New Orleans and it was just, I just got to say it was, it was a new beginning and it was the beginning of seeing, you know, a stage filled with beautiful women's faces, black faces. Everyone was, you know, women in charge, women pulling the lights, women DP. Women. It is just like, it was like wonderland. Yeah. And let me, let me uh, lean into that because, you know, um, to, uh, to the um, oppressors, equality and equity looks like oppression to them right you know so when we we sit in these spaces well what about the men or what you know it's like two percent <laughs> or something <laughs> ridiculous like that of directors are women in hollywood like if ava duvernay devoted an entire show it still would not equal the disparity and we're not even getting into black and so Absolutely. And what she did with Queen Sugar by having uh, every director being a woman, not just a woman of color, but a diverse uh, group of women uh, directing the shows, she changed Hollywood. Hollywood had not changed in over 100 years. She changed in six months what Hollywood could not do, would not do in six months. Now every show is, you know, it's like, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, we're looking for women directors now. The whole playing field has changed for the better, for the good, uh, subject to Ava DuVernay's brilliant idea of having, you know, all women directors. One person can make a difference. This is why, you know, every day I inspire somebody out there. Well, what can I do? One person can do, get someplace and do something like it's, it's not hard to center us. It's not hard to center people and humanity. It's not, it really isn't hard. It really isn't. Right. Just do the right thing. Just do, do, do the right thing. Do the authentic thing. Do what's right. And, uh, and she did that. And, you know, she's going on, of course, to uh, do many, many other shows. Um, but that was a watershed moment. That changed the game for 
but everyone and changed the game for Hollywood. All right. So you are also a uh, reasonable doubt. Uh, one of my guilty pleasures. I wish they would not use the N word so much because these people are too brilliant. They can do it without it. That's just my opinion. Julie dash. I'm going, I'm going to live on that one. But smart characters focuses on Jax who has a, you know, complicated background powerhouse attorney. There's a, a murder, law, a sexy, yes. sexy law procedure. When I saw the um, pilot, I said, Whoa, <laughs> like, you know. All right, which episode did you do? I did episode number six, and that's when Jax is first having uh, all the people on the witness stand, you know, saying, you know, he did it, she, he didn't do it, and putting uh, the the husband of the of the woman who was killed on the stand, and it was like some very powerful writing. Um, it was um, it was a great not only just a great opportunity, it was just working with Ramla Muhammad, who is the showrunner. It was an Emma Yahtzee, Coronaldi, and all the ladies of the, the Baldwin Hills Club. I mean, it was it just felt so familiar. Felt so familiar and relaxing. We had fun. We did a great job. And um and it was it was it was enjoy- it was like a deja vu moment almost, you know. Really? All right. Well, so, I was so, real nervous with the sex scenes, real nervous with the sex It was a lot, yeah. I mean, but you know, it and um <laughs> Michael Ealy, who's one of my favorite human beings in the real world, but I would never mess with him in film because you're going you gonna, you're gonna so lose your life. Oh Michael my god, Ealy, he's he brilliant. So cerebral, so intelligent, and so good, and at the same time, hilarious. He was hilarious, <laughs> you know. Why is he always the dude that's gonna flip and kill you in a movie? Like, <laughs> how- are, are you are you giving away spoilers? No, I'm not giving. I'm not saying he killed anybody. I'm just saying he's crazy. Everything uh, he, he did, he, 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 he gonna he, hold he, children right. out the window. He gonna kill. He gonna be under the bed, get ready to kill you. He why? <laughs> the only time I saw Michael Ealy not was when he was with Halle Berry uh, and Zora Neale Hurston's oh. there. God, and that was beautiful. Where T Cake ended up, he ended up dying. I, I hope I'm not giving it away, but y'all should read uh, more. Oh, yeah. That said, <laughs> that said, <laughs> oh my goodness, if this man don't stop getting typecast, I need to see him play s- something oh, closer you to himself. Him doing, like dance, and I'm happy. And I'm happy. He, he's intense, and he knows how to channel that intensity. And it's not just his blue eyes. He knows how to channel that intensity with his eyes and his physicality and all of these things. And he just becomes, he morphs into the character. He morphs so well into it. So when he's not morphed into the camera in between takes and he's hilarious, you're not quite sure. Should I laugh or should I? <laughs> Man, I could, I would be on, I would have one, my left corner, my right eye open with Kinda him like at all times. I'm over here because it's yes. like, you know, I was like, he's, this guy is dangerous. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Great, Ju- guy. Great guy, family man, all of that, you know. Julie Dash is here. All right, Queensbridge Projects, y'all. Queensbridge, we talking Nas and them, we talking Roxanne, Shantae and them. You know, yeah. How, tell me about Julie Dash growing up in the Queensbridge projects of New York. Okay, so I came before them. You... Yes, I know. I, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to touch the cultural yes, references for the... fit in, in in front of them. Uh, but um, I so enjoyed my childhood being born and raised in the Queensbridge project. It's like the largest village in the world <laughs> because in New York City, I didn't know there was life outside of it. I mean, I didn't even want to go to life outside of it. It was, um, hey, that's why I probably love the woman king so much. It was like that. Gina Prince Bryce Woods, the woman king. Yes, it was I'm like, trying to make the connection. Wait a minute. I mean, okay. It was like generations of women grooming other women, basketball teams, this and that and the other. Uh, it, it was just, I just, I just felt once again, the sense of deja vu when I was watching Gina's film. It was like, oh, this reminds me of the projects <laughs> growing up in the projects. And um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so your first film for women mm-hmm. that that probably feeds into that as well. Does it? Was well, that? 
Well, yeah, I had grown up hearing that, that Nina Simone song and I always loved it and wanted to visualize it. And so, um, so that's why I made it. <laughs> no, I wanted to, this was long before music videos. I made that in the seventies, like 70, 77 or something like that. Well, 75. <laughs> I'm just, I got my, my stats here. Oh, you got uh, Julie Des, 1975. I can't remember because I was making, I wasn't, I, you know, I'd shoot films, but not necessarily finish them the same year that I shot it. And so I know I did Diary of an African Nun also uh, around that time, around 75. Yeah. And uh, the great thing about all of these is all of my films made back then are still in distribution. <laughs> and so I'm looking at them then and was like, oh, that was the me then. And, and, and now, you know, it's like people say, oh, do you, are you the same pace person? It's like, no, you know, you, you grow and change. I was, I think I was a lot braver then. Mm. you know to try things because now you know it's like yeah you know wow i mean i remember that's the the uh the beauty of youth is that you don't know what you don't know in terms of <laughs> the pain that could come Learning, uh, exploring and and all of that it's like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna paint this studio with we painted the four women studio with uh the gilded gold you know gold flake you know shiny mm. and bounce the lights and I don't know if I'd do that because it would took a lot to restore that studio. <laughs> you know that <laughs> painted white again. It was like, oh boy, you know. Daughters of the dead, daughters of the dust. Um, I remember sitting in a theater. I'd never seen anything like that before. Uh, my my grandfather's who's over my shoulder, um, Geechee, grew up uh, and born and raised in Somerville. Uh, South Carolina. His his mother lived on a plantation. My my mother talks about it, but didn't quite understand that she was living on a plantation. And I think about the the preservation of culture in Nagola. What was your connection to this story? And again, women again told through these women. I mean, just cinem cinematography gold, like beauty, just amazing. <laughs> Arthur J. For he was a cinematographer. He lit the hell out of that. Yes, he Didn't did. He? Oh, mm. oh, uh, my! I just a little off to the side tangent. Sight and sound. Uh, last week, uh, Sight and Sound, uh, international, a uh, poll, uh, ranked Daughters of the Dust number sixty out of one hundred of the greatest films ever made. It should be higher. Oh, I agree with that. So I proud. agree. Yes. So proud of that. My connection is through my family, through my father's side of the family, um, you know, um, the low country, South Carolina. It wasn't called low country when we were growing up, but we used to no. go to Austin and John's Island and all of that. Now it's officially the low country. Uh, we called it the Sea Islands of the South. And, um, and I, I knew we were different, even, you know, growing up in Queensbridge, I, but I knew we were different from... <laughs> from other people and they were saying where is your father from what he, he has this accent what is he german or something and someone actually said that to me it's, he, it's like german how could he be german look at him um so yeah he had a Gullah Geechee accent and um and we we ate differently everything about us our uh interiorized was kind of a little different a little different from the other people in the projects Mm. so I was curious and so I started investigating uh by the time I got to graduate school at UCLA and it was like hmm we were some maroon people out there you know so it's like it was fascinating for you 1991 is when this came out you know mm -hmm. as you watch you know the trajectory of filmmaking and now there is an Ava DuVernay and Viola and and uh you know Issa Rae and and uh, I mean I'm, I'm no I'm missing some names uh the shy uh who is that Sarah yeah. and Yoke yeah and, uh, Nima Eva Barney. Gabriel yeah <laughs> yes get, name all of the names um you were the first those are your those are your children no, they, they ex well Ioka and they existed when I was there and Kathleen Collins and um, uh, they existed, but they weren't able to get uh, films put into distribution before Daughters of the Dust. So uh, 
you know, I, I stand in their shadow because, mm. you know, I watch their films being made. Uh, and now a lot of those films, they are bringing them back and distributing them. And, uh, and uh, the world is able to see uh, the films made by um, Black women and women of color everywhere, including Sarah Gomez in Cuba, who uh, was making films in the 70s, you know. Where are we now? You talk about your personal evolution, and th this is uh, required of all of us. If you were the same person in your 70s, 50s, 60s that you were in your 20s, something is wrong uh, in your development. <laughs> I think so. so. <laughs> yeah. Please check yourself. Please check yourself. Um, but for you, where are you today, Julie Dash? And what I am are you most proud of? I am a proud grandmother. I am a, still a filmmaker. I am a... Uh, I serve on film juries around the world. Uh, I think uh, you wanted me for your show earlier, but I was in Lisbon, and uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm still making movies. I'm working. Um, I just fi I'm finishing up a film for the Charleston Museum that's going to open in January. Uh, and I also uh, I did exhibits at the Metropolitan Museum of Art this spring which led to the Met Gala. Yeah, I got to go to the Met Gala based upon my exhibits um, uh, featuring the designs of uh, black designer Anne Lowe, who uh, designed and made the wedding dress for Jacqueline Kennedy and also Madame Etta Heinz. I represented her as, uh, I had Eartha Kitt representing her in the, my Eartha Kitt room. <laughs> so I had two rooms, one with Eartha Kitt and one with the Loaded Black Designer. So I, I've been doing a lot of things, exhibitions, museum works, and I'm also uh, the Diana King Endowed Professor at Spelman College. Come yeah. on, come on, HBCU. <laughs> yeah. and, and you, you, and you lit up when you said that and Warehouse. And you know, Warehouse is across the street, so I can run across the street. You know. How important, um, because I think about Spike Lee and, you know, even though he went to NYU, there's a lot of nods to Spike the is a Morehouse brother. He's from the house. And he just uh, last week, he dedicated our administration building at Spelman to his mother and grandmother, who both graduated Spelman and both women married Morehouse men. Come on. This is Samuel L. Jackson, Chadwick Boseman. All you know when you think about you know the rich culture that is developed in these spaces where professors and administrators care. Some there may be some challenges, but that's part of Black life. Mm -hmm. But that you know at the center is us. How 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 impactful? Because you came through City College, which is like a HBCU to me in Harlem. You know, <laughs> you know. It's, I love that. That's funny. Yes, I graduated City College. Uh, and then people in other states say, is that a two-year college? It's like, no, it's CCNY. No, it's not. City University. Uh, and then I went to Los Angeles where I did uh, two years in a conservatory, the American Film Institute. And so I got a master's there. And then I left from there and went to UCLA and got a master's at UCLA, all in film. How important it is to me, very important, especially in my time when uh, this was before digital filmmaking. So we couldn't really afford to rent those $75,000 cameras to make a film. But if you were in a, a film program at a, a university or college, you had free access to the equipment, to the sound stages, all of these things. And so that's one of the reasons why I was in school forever. Um, but I know the importance of uh, working with a group, working with a group of like-minded people. Uh, and, you know, as you probably know, as a member of the, what we call now the LA Rebellion of the, the people, the filmmakers of color making films in Hollywood outside of the belly of the beast. So when I was uh, mid-career and, and all of these universities and colleges were asking me, would I come teach there? Would I lecture there? I chose Spelman because that's where I belong. I, I came up in Queensbridge. I came up as an Agoje, <laughs> a freedom fighter like the Agoje, and I needed that's the way I need to be teaching uh, mm. emerging filmmakers uh, in Morehouse and in Spelman.
I you know, I make references to the women king i mean that that for me that was such a powerful film is that the kind of film julie dash would do if julie oh, dash absolutely. had a magic wand like so if you not just a mag, you have a magic wand it's, in, it's between your ears and in your chest and your heart um what 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 is on the horizon for you well I mean, let's see um well, there's certain films that I'm attached to projects that are, you know, I'll just run through them, like Forbidden Love about, you know, a Black priest in the, in the 1950s trying to negotiate life between the sacred, across the sacred and the secular. Um, the Picture Taker, which is an Andre Holland um, uh, project uh, about the photographer Ernest Withers, who is uh, uh, the still photographer for Martin Luther King, and he also worked for the FBI. Ooh. Uh, uh, the Ann Lowe story, once again, the Black designer who uh, designed for Jacqueline Kennedy. And um, my project that I've been developing for the last 11 years is one of them is called Eleanor Roosevelt's Battalion. And I don't know how, if you know how close Eleanor Roosevelt was to Black women. Eleanor mm -hmm. Roosevelt and Mary McLeod Bethune created the 6888 Postal Battalion. And those are the 850 African-American women who served overseas during World War II. I have been pitching this story for 11 years. We have the book, Sandra Ever Evers Manley and I, and we have been pitching this story as a limited series, the scripts are written, everything, and everyone is saying, no, 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 but we're not giving up. Oh, there will be a yes, Julie there Dash. Will there will be a yes. How sweet is it to be at the age that you are? Because, you know, a lot of people feel like, you know, if I if I don't make it by this time, it's like, you know, I'm looking at Cheryl Lee Ralph right now, who's been great for her entire life. She gets an Emmy, and now it's like, no, we've always known that she was all of these things, but now the world, you know, is finally catching up. Uh, you know what? You know what gives me peace of mind and solace when uh, Maya Angelou was, I think she was uh, in her early 70s, and she rejoined the Directors Guild. I helped to sign her in. The director's guild called and said, just for posterity, would you like to put your signature on her application? And I said, yes, <laughs> yes, I will. So she made down in the Delta when she was in her early 70s. So, hey, <laughs> you know. It's never too late and just keep going. Because when, when, when you popped in, I was like, Julie Dash is, is, is a vampire. She's uh, <laughs> immortal. What's happening here? What what is the secret? I guess it's the joy. It's the joy the and fulfillment. The joy is the melanin and is the eating seafood all your life. <laughs> okay. Oh, you've always not uh even back in the day you didn't do the hot dogs and the hamburgers and the stuff? We ate mostly seafood in my family, and that's part of that whole Gullah Geechee thing. Gullah Geechee. Okay. That uh, we used to be all ashamed of. You know, people have rice krispies for breakfast and we're eating fish roe and grits. And you know, he's like, "Hey, thank you now, sardines and and uh, crab, and, <laughs> you know." And look at you, okay, y'all, y'all got the diet. Now we we gonna get the 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 nourishment from the films. And I want this to not be your last time here, so I want you to come back with each and every film. And when you get this last one done, because uh, you will, I want you to come back with Eleanor's uh, Roosevelt's Battalion. Roosevelt. I want you, yeah. yeah. yes, still do. Uh, it's such <laughs> a pleasure. Thank you. It's an honor. Y'all better know this name. Julie Dash, Julie Dash, Julie Dash, y'all. Legend. I am so grateful. It's the Carrot Hunter Show. We'll be right back.